Hello again, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. <clears throat> the other day I was asked a question by a beloved brother. Is it a sin to play sports? Is it a sin to play sports? Hmm. And um, this beloved brother um, is not of my nation. And uh, the, the significance of that is I will be making reference here a couple times to either American football or football, F-U-T-B-O-L, okay? But like I said, the question was asked, is it a sin to play sports? Well, the word sport itself appears within the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, true and real scriptures. It appears seven times in um, the uh, authorized version of the scriptures, excuse me. But before we look at those, Let's define the word sport, shall we? And for this, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The word sport, as defined by Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Sport, now. That which diverts and makes merry. Play game. Diversion. Also, mirth. The word signifies both the cause and the effect. That which produces mirth. And the mirth or merriment produced. Her sports were such as carried riches of knowledge upon the stream of delight. Sydney. Here the word denotes the cause of amusement. They called for Samson out of the prison house and he made them sport. We're going to look at that verse. Two. Mockery. Or mock. Mockery. Contemptuous mirth then make sport at me then let me be your jest shack they made a sport of his prophets estras three that which that with which one plays or which is driven about to flitting leaves the sport of every wind. Not, never does man appear to greater disadvantage than when he is in the when he, when he is the sport of his own ungoverned passion. J. Clark. Let me read that again. Never does man appear to greater disadvantage than when he is the sport of his own ungoverned passion. Passion. Four. Play. Idle jingle. An author who should introduce such a sport of words upon our stage would meet with small applause of small applause. Room. Five. Diversion of the field. As fouling. F O W L I N G. Hunting. Fishing. Call. Clarion. In sport, to do a thing in sport is to do it in jest, for play or diversion. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Again, we're going to look at that as well. Sport. Verb transitive. To divert. To make merry used with the reciprocal pronoun. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Isaiah 57. 2. To represent by any kind of play. Now sporting on thy lyre, the love of 
youth, Dryden. Sport, verb intransitive, to play, to frolic, to wanton, see the brisk lambs that sport along the mead. Anonymous. Two, to trifle. The man that laughs at religion sports with his own salvation. So the overall definition of sport is what? That which diverts and makes merry. Diversion. Unfortunately, you know where it says in the scriptures, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. One of the drawbacks to watching Hollywood movies as a lost man was a lot of things are still up here that I can remember. And there is a certain movie which I'm not going to name, but there's a quote from a movie that I have quoted before and I'm going to alter it. But it's actually quite a quite an accurate quote. What is that quote? And I'm going to use my nation, Jesuit America, as an example. America is the mob. Conjure magic for us. And we will be distracted. Take away our freedom. And instill our sports. The Jesuits will give us entertainment. And they will love them for it. Now, as we saw in the dictionary there, to divert, to make merry. The actual action in and of itself. Example, a father and a son passing about a football. Passing about, or back and forth, to and fro, to and fro. That in and of itself is not sin. No, it's a mindless pastime. Passing a football to and, uh, to and fro, kicking it. I'm talking about the F-U-T-B-O-L. Taking a baseball, a father and son. Throwing it at each other, hoping the other one catches it, and then throwing it back at them. That in and of itself is not sin. It's, it's a harmless, right? Pretty harmless, right? The actual action itself. You know, throwing the ball at each other. No, that in and of itself is not sin. Go to Genesis chapter 6, uh, 26. Genesis chapter 26. Remember we saw one of the definitions as frolicking? Genesis chapter 26. Verse 8. Now this is when Isaac and Rebekah were, uh, were in uh, Gerar. Okay? And Isaac, as his daddy, Abraham did, uh, lied about Sarah and said that she was his sister. Isaac did the same thing, said that Rebekah was his sister. Genesis chapter 26, verse 8. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time, Isaac, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Sporting, frolicking. Judges, chapter 16. That's number one. Judges chapter 16. You know, incidentally, when it comes to Samson, um, personally, I don't think Samson was the sharpest knife in the drawer. 
Uh, I personally believe that Samson, yeah, was not the sharpest knife in the drawer, not the brightest bulb in the box, you know. He messed around with his calling. Um, absolutely he did. But I, I, I just wanted to mention that to you, that um, I don't think, I don't think Samson was the brightest. But Judges 16 verses, oh, uh, let's see. 23 under verse 27. This is when Samson gets captured and they put out his eyes. Okay? And he repents during that. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. For they said, Our god hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy, and the destroyer of our country, which slew many. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport, entertainment, to ridicule him. Sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were, and there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. They were mocking him, laughing at him. He was their source of entertainment. Proverbs, chapter 10. Proverbs, yeah, we're going to look at every occurrence of the word sport. Okay? Proverbs, chapter 10. <laughs> we will read <laughs> verses 19 on to verse 24. Now we ought to read 18 on to verse 24. 18 on to verse 24. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Pro, um, Psalm 14 and 53. Check that out on your own time. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Let that one roll around in your head a little bit. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. As sport to a fool to do mischief. These people who attack others here on YouTube, you know, these Jesuit coadjutors and infiltrators and stuff like that, this is, it's entertainment to them. That's all it is. It's sport to them. It is a sport, it is a sport to a fool to do mischief. So I say, live it up, because it's sport. To a fool to do mischief. The fear of the wicked it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The fear of the wicked it shall come upon him. The thing that you wicked people truly fear is going to come upon you. So sad. Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. <laughs> Verse 
verses 17 on to verse 21. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Verse, uh, Proverbs chapter 26. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Have you ever done that? As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceive his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Am not I in amusement? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Remember these right there. Remember that. Hinge that. Okay? Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. Verses 1. Ooh. Verses 1 and verse 5. Isaiah 57. The righteous perish, and no man taketh it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Oh boy. The righteous is taken away from the evil to come? Oh. You, you, you figure that one out for yourself, okay? He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw nigh hither, ye sons of the sorceress, mystery of Babylon, the seed of the adulterer and the whore, Roman Catholicism, against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom do ye make, against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression? A seed of falsehood. Oh boy. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. Saying, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Idols. Very interesting. And finally... Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. You ask me a question, um, and you're not one of these infiltrators asking for strife and debate. I really want to see what the scriptures say. Um, This is how I answer you. Second Peter chapter two. <laughs> Verses twelve on to verse fourteen. But these as natural brute beasts unregenerate, <laughs> made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, because they are not saved. They are natural brute beasts, unregenerate men. They, they don't understand. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it, Pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings, entertaining themselves. 
<laughs> Are you not entertained? Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with coveted practice, covetous practices. Cursed children. Oh, oh, a lot of good, a lot of good verses there. <laughs> Especially when we're talking about sports. So, okay, so far, all right. We have seen the occurrences of the word sport in Scripture. Now I ask you, with maybe the exception of Genesis, <laughs> doesn't seem that sport is all that favorable, does it? Does it? Entertainment. Are you not entertained? Again, the actual act of someone kicking a football to and fro, father and son, that in and of itself is not a sin. Father and son throwing a baseball to and fro, throwing it at each other, hoping the other one will catch it. That in and of itself is not sin. But what we call sport today, as we see and as we have read in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, sport is what? Entertainment. Uh, Brother Frederick Noon, by the way, I'm going to, um, if you see this, I am going to link that, that video. Brother Frederick Noon made a, the best rebuke of American football showing the insane idolatry and um, just wickedness of how people here in America love their American football. Uh, it, it, it is to this day the best video I've seen, and it's pretty short, but it is the best video I have seen to date rebuking American football. And he's not even an American. <laughs> but it is the best one. Um, I also am aware that football, F-U-T-B-O-L, in other nations is like very high, held in high regard. And of course, like us Americans, we call it soccer, which those of you of other nations really detest that. It's called football. We have American football and you have football. But the actual act itself is not sin. But go to Proverbs again, chapter 13. Proverbs, chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. And also Proverbs chapter 16, Verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and on the haughty spirit before a fall. Only by pride cometh contention, the number one contender, but with the well advised is wisdom. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. What can, the, what can, and eventually and inevitably, the plane of sports lead on to? Competition. Pride. A haughty spirit. You win a game of whatever, and incidentally, try to find the word game 
in the authorized version of the scriptures. You do that on your own time. Good luck. But um, you're playing a game or something for entertainment. What can it lead to? You win. Good game. Yeah, good game. Somewhere resounding up there. What happened? I'm better than you, I'm better than you, I beat you, I was better than you for one moment. Here in America, people are obsessed with American football. Again, that video that Brother Fred, uh, Frederick Noon did, the best. It shows the lunacy that people here in my nation get over Football, American football, okay? And I've seen people get into fist fights over contentions of their favorite football team. They become unnatural brute beasts, you know, or as natural brute beasts, excuse me. Uh, yeah. But the actual plane of sports in and of itself, the actual action itself is not sin, but what it leads to. Are you gonna sit there and try to justify, well, I play sports and I don't get proud? You might need to consider and smell what you're shuffling. Okay. Does it always lead to that? Well, a father and son kicking a football around or throwing baseballs at each other? Maybe not. But playing sports amongst, you know, you. Uh, I, football season around here, American football around here is going on and you can see kids playing football and it's comp they get competitive. Pride gets the best of them. It's entertainment. Just like pro wrestling, it's entertainment. And you know what's the most trouble troubling thing to me? Even as a lost man, I did try as a lost man to find amusement in sports. And I kind of did, but um, America is going bankrupt. There are homeless people out there and people do not have jobs and are losing their jobs. And yet these sports entertainers are making millions, millions of dollars to play a game. Granted, with American football, they can have their neck broken like that, their back broken like that, paralyzed, all for the love of the game. And don't give me this garbage, Tim Tebow, these Christian athletes who thank God for getting a touchdown. Oh, I just thank the Lord that he let me get that basket or I thank the Lord that yeah, I got that touchdown that remember that Tim Tebow guy who would uh, you, you obviously have heard of this individual who's working now for Jesuit Trump <laughs> yeah yeah good luck with that but he would used to kneel down and mock the Lord Jesus Christ by prayer on a football field an American football field Yeah, yeah. I remember hearing football coaches, American football coaches, excuse me, say, I believe that God, well, I believe God sometimes on these football fields here. Yeah. yeah, you think so? Maybe the little G God of this world. Yeah, yeah, insanity. Are you not entertained? Is that how you want to be entertained? Hmm? Sports? Huh? Well, uh, what 
let's let's say it to scriptures about this. Turn to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, verses nineteen on to verse twenty seven. First Corinthians chapter nine. Verses 19 on to verse 27. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto, unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain gain them that are that are without law. To the weak became I became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. I am made. All things. I am made. Paul didn't become a sodomite to preach to sodomites. Paul didn't get drunk to preach to drunks. Paul didn't take cocaine to uh, preach to coke addicts. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Oh, see, so we as the church of the living God are competing with one another? No. No. And this is not giving credence to competition that leads on to pride in sports. Let's keep reading. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, the applause of men, the gold medal, the stupid uh, whatever that trophy is of American football, or that circular one with the flags all over it from the um, uh, football one. Um, they get that, the, they, they get the glitter, the glitz, all that. A corruptible crown. Yeah. But we, an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, uncertainty, not as uncertainly, excuse me, so fight I. Not as one that ble beateth the air. Beateth the air, you could say shadow boxing. Doing nothing. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. All is vanity. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that I, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now, note how that it says corruptible crown? Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verses 25 on to verse 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it. 
for it is a cursed thing. Watching football, American football on television, you see the glitz, the glamour, the gold, the jewels, the fine suits. These American football stars and these hockey players and what have you, all surrounded by gorgeous, beautiful women. Their silver and their gold. Idols. Little G gods has made through the television. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. You don't bring in the television to watch football, sport. It's a diversion. It's meaningless. It's vanity. What profit do you get besides your entertainment? And you might be saying, well, does God have a problem with entertainment? Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 2. You knew that already, didn't you? Second Timothy, chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Thief is a robber. He goeth up through, uh, goeth up by another way instead of going through the door. The thief cometh in to kill and destroy. What do you think sports are? Entertainment. In and of itself, the, like I said, kicking a football back and forth, throwing a baseball at each other, that in and of itself, no, that's not a sin. What's it going to lead to? What's it going to lead to? First Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 on to verse 21. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith while you're sitting there watching American football, while you're sitting there being entertained by the things of the world. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which in, which in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate, potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. 
that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. Entertainment, right? Sport. Till I come, <laughs> give attendance to reading. To exhortation. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It's not working to save yourself as far as eternally. Okay, just keep that in mind. So, what does God think of entertainment? You know, if you're that starved for entertainment, why? Um, you know, why don't you get a book? You know, Book on, I don't know, church history? Book on the Jesuits? Read a dictionary? Okay? Read like the Constitution, Shakespeare, whatever. Do you think? I know there are those of you out there of the Church of the Living God that will justify watching sports. Okay? I, I, we've already covered. Playing sports in and of itself is not a sin. Okay, the actual, you know, never mind. But what does it lead to? It's the pride, contention. And let me let me ask you, seriously. Do you think our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, is okay with you being entertained by the things of the world? You know, you can judge a society by the way it entertains itself. Look at the Romans when they were throwing the Church of the Living God to lions. Look at Jesuit America. Look at the pornography epidemic. Look at uh, Jesuit America's love for their sports, their Hollywood movies. Their Kindle. <laughs> how how rarely do people read books anymore? And what books are you reading? <laughs> of course, and y'all probably have figured this one out. Romans chapter twelve, verses one and two. Of course. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It will not cleave unto me. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Where are we going next? Huh? 
You two little guys probably already figured that one out, didn't you? First John, chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world. Well, I don't love the world. I just, I just, excuses, huh? Shh, shut up. You're going to give that to the Lord at the uh, judgment seat of Christ? <laughs> Good luck with that. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Abideth forever. Brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God, need to really beware of sports. Okay? And again, like I said, father, son, or mother, daughter, whatever, throwing things back and forth, you know, just, you know, mindless entertainment, I guess. But, Playing sports in a collective sense leads to contention, leads to pride. Leads to pride. Go back to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Go back there. Proverbs chapter 10. Come on, fingers work with me now. You're already back there probably. Proverbs chapter 10. Verses 18 on the verse 24 again. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And Proverbs chapter 26, again. Verses 17. On to verse 22. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Strife, biting, contention. The words of a tail-bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Yeah, 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 um... Look, brethren, beloved brethren, um, we're going to be caught up soon. And if you're entertaining yourself by playing sports, you might want to reconsider Um, and of course, um, what as you as the Church of the Living God have any, why, why would you want to even watch that stuff of the world? 
it's the modern equivalent to the gladiators of Rome. It's, it's entertainment. What profit does it do you to entertain yourself with sports? Passes the time. Read a book. Here. Read a book. But, um, yeah, that that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Um, no, in and of itself, it is not a sin to play sports. But you always have to keep in your mind, what is it going to lead to? What is it going to lead to? And can you edify the... I, 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 I just, I can't get that image of that nut that twit, Tim Tebow, calls himself a Christian, of course, when he would, um, you know, make a touchdown or something, he would mock the Lord, get down there and do this thing where he would pray and thank the Lord for him giving him a touch. Are you serious? What, the, the God take care for oxen? So, anyway... That's, um, that is how I would answer that question. But I hope that answers your question. But uh, anyway, that is going to do it for these videos. Um, got more videos coming uh, over the weekend. I love you, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Um, pray for one another. do we'll pray for one another. I love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Bye-bye.